Ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do is talk to you about transformations of functions. Now, I'm talking about transformations of functions. I want to go back to some very basic functions that you guys should basically kind of all feel familiar with. First one is the quadratic equation. All right, you guys remember this from algebra two, correct? Yes, okay. And then we'll just kind of work into, before that, you guys usually started with the absolute value function. Then you kind of moved into y equals the square root function. Um, and you guys also dealt with, uh, let's see, for you guys also dealt with the logarithmic function. We dealt with exponential functions. And you guys also learned about the reciprocal function. So regardless what you remember from Algebra 2 or not, I know that these, have all been, these are all functions that were a part of your curriculum. So you guys all spent time learning how to graph these, learning what the graphs look like, as well as applying their transformations. Now you might have forgot what the graphs look like, and you might have forgot about transformations, but that's okay. I know somewhere in your brain that was at least presented to you, or at least it was in a book that was given to you. All right? Now, what we did though is in Algebra 2, we really started getting way away from using a table and really started using transformation. So what we did is we, we recognized that when we have these, these are what we call the parent graphs, all right? And when we got away from the parent graphs, what we looked at was the kind of like transformations. Like how can we shift the graph based on how it, ch how the, um, what values are in change from the parent graph. So what we did is we created these values, A, H, and K, that basically affected our graph, all right? And you guys are very familiar with it from, for the quadratic. I'm going to continue using h and k. You might have used different values, um, like different letters. But just remember, a, h, and k just represent real numbers. And just a reminder, I'll just go back there. Let's, uh, I'll just label these. This is a quadratic. This is a absolute value. This is a radical. This is a logarithmic. This is exponential. And this is called the reciprocal. Okay. So those are basically going to be the functions that you guys basically should have remembered as far as A, B, as far as you know what they go through. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to bring back a little bit of a um, little back of memory and kind of see if we can remember some certain things. Uh, Alexis, do you remember what A represented? What did A tell you about the graph? No, right above. What is the A, the number in front? What is that going to tell you about the graph? Think of quadratics. Remember, what did that A tell us to do? Uh, which way across the axis? Yeah, well, basically, like kind of the opening a little bit, right? And that's what we kind of focused on with quadratics. Like, if hey, A was positive, the graph opened up. If A was negative, the graph opened down. But in reality, really what it did is ex exactly what those students you know, kind of said it's, is it, if it reflected across the x axis. Now, a also has something to do with dilation, but we'll get to that in a second. So if right now, I just want you to understand that A, when A was less than 0, the graph reflected the x-axis. Now, the next connection I want you guys to make is look at for all of these functions. Now again, this is really important. I'm actually hoping that some of you guys forgot what these equations look like. right? I really am, because what I want you to understand is it doesn't matter what the graph looks like. Do you guys know if you have an A in front of this logarithm, then you know what's, what's happening. It is being, if A is like negative 1, then what is, what's happening to that graph? It's going to be reflected. It's not necessarily down because we don't know what the graph looks like, right? The graph could look like this. 
who knows what the graph looks like. So if it's negative, it's going to be reflected up, right? So we don't want to assume everything looks like the quadratic. But the thing is, we don't know what, and like, maybe you don't know what the graph looks like. All you know is if a is less than 0, there's a reflection of the parent graph across the x-axis. All right. Um, now, the next thing, Alexis, is the a outside or inside of the parent function? So here's the parent function. And then look at where the a is. is the, would you say the a is outside or inside? And that's kind of informal terminology, so just kind of give me what your thought is. Outside. outside. And that is absolutely correct. And you can think about it is the reason why you know, it's outside is being multiplied on the outside of the function. right? It's outside of these parentheses. right? And that's kind of a very obvious thing. So yes, outside would be perfect. And that's something that's going to be important, which I'll get into in a second. All right, let's now move into H, my favorite. And we get to pick on okay. Skylar. Skylar, do you remember what H represents? Yeah, it's your horizontal shift, right? So your horizontal shift. Now, again, here's where everybody usually gets confused. Um, if you guys remember, remember it's, let's go back to the quadratics. It's y equals x minus h. So to make sense of this, what I like to do is use parentheses. y equals, let's go back to our first equation, x minus 2. If I'm going to put everything in parentheses, right? If I put everything in parentheses, x minus h, x minus 2. What is h equal to? 2, positive 2. Since it's a positive 2, what is my shift going to be? To the right. Everybody wants to think, oh, it's x minus 2, it's to the left. Well, no, the 2 is actually positive because the formula is x minus h. On contrary, when we have y equals, let's do the what, x plus 2? That was x plus 2. Well, what about this? Why is this? So if that's right, then that means left. Well, y, it's not negative. Well, remember, x plus, we can rewrite this as x minus a negative 2. Now, we do the same thing. x minus h, x minus negative 2. So in this case, it's actually a negative. That's why we're shifting it to the left. Okay? The easy way to remember this is always kind of think of the opposite. But the problem is, how do you remember which is h and which is k when you're looking at your phone? So Skylar, what we got to do is determine, is the h inside of our function or outside of our function? OK. Um, and let's think about this. Why would we say inside? Let's go back and look through all these functions. It's inside the parentheses. It's inside the absolute value. It's under the radical. Inside the parentheses. It's in the exponent. It's in the denominator. Do you guys see how I kept on describing it as in or under or inside something? right? So when you guys are trying to identify your h and your k, notice a is being multiplied. H, is, h and k are always adding or subtracting. But there, it's, h is always inside of the function. So yes, that's going to be inside. Very good. And then last but not least, k. And then let's pick on Kaden. Kaden. Kaden, do you remember what k is going to do? It's a vertical shift. And Kaden, were you going to say that k is going to be outside or inside the function? It's going to be outside. It's outside the function. And guys, just take a look here real quick. Look at the k. Do you guys kind of see k is kind of like this afterthought? You have everything that's going on, and then it's just plus k. Everything's going on, plus k. Everything's going on, plus k. Right? It could be minus k, too, as well. But k, if k is positive, you're going up. k is like going down. But notice how, like, it's just outside. It's not really change. It doesn't change anything with the equation as far as like the formatting. It's just at the end you're doing plus k. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. No. Too low. Okay. Um, so now the next thing I'm going to bring up to you guys is just another set of. Um, so these are six functions that you guys should be familiar with. I'm just going to present you guys with another five more functions that we're going to use in this class that you guys need to be aware of and that you're going to see. Um, and again, it's OK if you don't know what the graph looks like. We will eventually talk about the graphs. But at this point in the game, I just want you to be able to recognize what the transformations are. And that's it. So as long as you can identify your a, h, and your k, then you'll be fine. 
All right, so let's just write these down so therefore you guys have them. So now we're going to get into our trigonometric functions. y equals the sine of x. So y equals a times sine of xh plus k. We have our y equals cosine of x. So that's y equals a times cosine of x minus h plus k. We have 9. y equals uh, tangent of x. So it's y equals a times tangent of x minus h plus k. Um, we're going to use the natural logarithm. Natural logarithm is really the same as the logarithm, but it just looks a little differently, so a lot of kids get confused with it, so I'm just going to include it. And we have the cubic is the other one we're going to use. Oops. What am I doing? So we have y equals ln of x. So that's going to be y equals a times ln of x minus h plus k. And 11, y equals um, x cubed. So that would be y equals a times x minus h cubed plus k. All right. And obviously, guys, you could continue this power. You could do quartic. You could do to, you know, quintic. You can keep on going up higher, higher powers. There's also two other functions, uh, the greatest integer function. There's also the logistics function. And there's also the identity function. But mainly in this class, we're just going to focus on these functions right here. Okay, So um, that's why I just make sure you guys have those. And just make sure you guys understand it really doesn't matter what 